In this presentation, I am going to discuss caprine arthritis encephalitis virus. From this point forward, I will refer to the virus as CAEV. CAEV may present in a number of different ways. Its frequent clinical incidence and its various different presentation make it an important differential to have on your list whilst working with goats. I am going to work through a case involving a pet goat in order to illustrate the variations in clinical presentation, differential diagnoses, availability of diagnostics, and diversity of treatment plan options required to accurately work up a CAEV case. The goat in discussion is a four-year-old Sarnine Doe. As previously mentioned, she is a pet goat and is the only goat on the property. She presented to the clinic with a four-day history of minimally weight-bearing sudden onset lameness in her right forelimb. At presentation, she was non-weight-bearing on, on this leg and her right carpus was grossly enlarged. Upon palpation, the carpus was found to be firm but not hot. She had restricted range of motion and pain over this joint was evident. Her body condition score was good and both her heart and respiratory rates were within normal limits. She was normothermic and had no other abnormalities other than those described in her right forelimb and overgrown toenails in all four feet. The problem list we created from her physical examination included acute non-weight bearing lameness on her right forelimb, right carpal joint enlargement, pain and restrictive range of motion, as well as overgrown toenails in all four feet. So what were our differentials? As this appeared to be a unilateral problem, trauma was high on our differentials list. We also considered arthritis of both a viral origin, as with CAEV, and bacterial origin, as with septic arthritis, and osteopetrosis. After questioning her owner further, we decided trauma was a less likely cause, as she had no known history of a traumatic event. As she was normothermic, we were less suspicious of septic arthritis. However, we did not rule out the possibility of it being the cause. In order to get a better understanding of what was happening to her carpal joint, we needed to take radiographs. We administered 0.4 mils of 2% xylazine IM as pre-medication, followed by two milliliters of ketamine stun IV for sedation. Lateral, dorsal and oblique carpal radiographs were taken of the right carpus. These showed severe periosteal reaction with severe osteophyte production to the carpal bones including in the intra-articular spaces. There was also possible evidence of calcification of the medial and lateral periarticular tendons and ligaments. As is evident from these radiographs, the doe was suffering from severe arthritic changes in her carpal joint. Due to the severity of the doe's arthritic changes, her treatment options were humane euthanasia or pain management. We recommended humane euthanasia. The owner declined this, however, so we needed to revise our treatment plan. An arthrocentesis of her carpal joint was performed in order to determine whether the joint was septic or not. This revealed translucent synovial fluid with obvious fibrin tags. Synovial fluid cytology was cellular with mixed mononuclear cells and many fibrin tags. Few to negligible polynuclear inflammatory cells were present and bacteria was not noted. This confirmed the joint was not septic. Osteopetrosis has similar arthritic changes and calcification as CAEV. However, there is often a history of excessive calcium intake. This was not the case with this doe. Ideally, serological testing utilizing an ELISA test should have been performed in order to definitively diagnose CAEV in this case. Due to her severe non-septic arthritic changes, it was decided not to perform the ELISA test as the treatment plan would remain the same. Humane euthanasia was discussed with the owner and recommended as the doe was suffering from irreversible severe arthritic changes. As this was declined, the doe was medically managed in order to help reduce her pain and give her quality of life. She was hospitalized and received a sterile joint injection of 0.7 mils kinocort 
and 0.5 mils amphoprine. The dome was medicated with 2 mils medicam subcutaneously and Sinovan and was discharged with a, on a regime of 10 megs per keg of phenylbutazone sachets once per day with follow-up scheduled for six days later. After seven days, she showed improvement as can be seen in this video. With this improvement, it was decided that she would require a Sinovan injection weekly for four weeks, then every six weeks to three months. The prognosis is guided to poor, as CAEV cannot be cured, but pain can be managed. Fiona was warned that if her quality of life was deteriorating, humane euthanasia would need to be seriously considered. In a case of encephalitis, they are almost always fatal. The reason I wanted to present this case is because although the literature states that CAEV is a widespread disease in Australia, it is not highlighted in the theoretical portion of veterinary training. This may be due to the fact that the same papers mention there was possible evidence of a reduction in the incidence of the disease, but I believe it is still worth discussing, especially as it can present in various forms. CAEV is a lentivirus, which causes a persistent lifelong infection. The virus is latent in monocytes until these monocytes mature and become macrophages, which disseminate into other tissues such as the mammary glands, brain, synovial membranes, lungs and associated lymph nodes. The site in which the infected macrophages disseminate to determines the clinical presentation. Many goats remain as asymptomatic carriers of CAEV. Transmission is via free virus in colostrum or milk, direct contact between infected goats, and procedures such as tattooing or multiple use of needles, which can transfer blood from an infected animal to a non-infected animal. There are five clinical forms of the disease. These are arthritis, mastitis, interstitial pneumonitis, encephalitis, and progressive weight loss. As in the case of the doe, the carpal joint is primarily affected and is often grossly enlarged. Goats tend to be yearlings or adults when affected by arthritis. Some will present with slight lameness for a number of years, whereas others will present acutely with severe lameness, as with this case. They are usually afebrile with a good appetite, but may have gradual loss of condition depending on the severity of the lameness. Tendons and bursae can be affected. Mastitis or hard udder includes fibrosis and induration of the udder. This is significant for Australia's goat industry as CAEV has been shown to reduce their production targets and lifespan. Many CAEV goats are seropositive but subclinical, meaning they can transmit the disease and keep it within the herd without the cause of reduced production being obvious to identify. Progressive interstitial retroviral pneumonia, aka interstitial pneumonitis, causes a dry cough, which can progress to become chronic dyspnea and may result in weight loss. The encephalitis form tends to affect kids two to six months of age. However, this is uncommon. Neurological signs in adults are also uncommon. Progressive weight loss may be the only clinical sign, or it may be in conjunction with the aforementioned signs. Unfortunately, there are no prophylactic treatments such as vaccines available for CAEV, so the only preventative measure is early identification and isolation. Milk should not be pulled in order to reduce the chance of spreading the disease throughout the kid population. An ELISA test can take three days to run and requires the infection to have been present for approximately 60 days in order for a positive result. This can make early identification of the disease difficult, especially as many animals are asymptomatic. Therefore, when working with production animals in which there is a reduced productivity, it is important to keep CAEV on your differential list so that it can be tested for even if the goats are asymptomatic. As this doe is a pet, 
we were able to give her a once-off dose of phenylbutazone. This would not be possible in a production herd, and therefore medical treatment would involve one mg per keg meloxicam every other day, with the goal to wean it down to three days per week and then two days per week, within six months as a long-term treatment. This case also identifies the importance of giving owners all the treatment options and allowing them to decide how to proceed. Many owners see their goats the same way as people see cats or dogs, so they need to be given the option to proceed as if we were treating their companion animal as opposed to a production animal. Thank you for listening.